Well, good afternoon, family. We're back from cold Cincinnati, Ohio last weekend. And so uh, I'll just be uh, giving a short introduction to uh, a couple of our speakers today. Um, well, just, just to give you a, a background of, of who from Grace Life went to our Young Adults Conference last weekend, GC Ignite. Uh, this is a sample of, of one of their shirts. Megan and I are wearing them today. Um, so uh, Megan Stapleton, David Dizot, um, Stephen, uh, Stephen Morrison, and I uh, were of the ones from Grace Life that attended the Young Adults Conference last weekend, and we had a blast. Um, so uh, we're going to have Megan first, and, and then Stephen, and then um, I'll, I'll close. So, Megan? Hi, all. <laughs> So I'm also going to give a bit of a background of what GC Ignite is, if this is your first time hearing of it. So it is a, a conference slash retreat for adults ages the age of 18 through 30-ish. We have a couple people who, who started coming back three years ago. The first time was January 2017, who were um, very close to 30, and now they're 31, 32. So we're sort of flexible on the, the, the upper end there. But really, it's for, for young people who are in GCI congregations who are either in leadership positions there or are interested. And really, we're just trying to um, create a space for young people to come and be around their peers and see what else is going on in different GCI congregations around the United States. And we actually even had, um, had one, one young man who was from the GCI congregation in Denmark. Um, so that was, that was very cool to be able to see how um, the youth of GCI are, are really everywhere and we're able to connect and we, um, we bond, we play games, we have a lot of socializing, um, but we also have a lot of intentional time to talk about uh, how we can grow in our leadership um, and how we can become better equipped to serve not only in our churches but also in our communities and in our families. And the theme of this year was Renew, and it was based out of the, the chapter Romans 12, um, where it talks about, do not be um, conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And we talked about, um, we went through that whole chapter, and we did different sessions and workshops where we broke out into small groups, and we talked about different relevant issues and how um, the, the words in Romans 12 apply to that. And I had the, the opportunity to, to lead one of those workshops talking about the, the value of the church. And I would love to share a little bit about that with you and why that was really powerful for me in preparing it and for the discussion that, that came out of, of that workshop. So I'm going to read the part in Romans 12 um, that I pulled from. Um, so that starts in Romans 12:3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all of the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And so we talked about why church is of value to us, why it is so important. We, we I... Um, wanted everyone who was in, in my workshop to, to share their church experience and their stories. And we also talked about the, the things in the church that we experienced that maybe weren't so great, because as you know, we are just a bunch of broken people. And so, so pain and hurt also happens within the church, even though we may like to think that it is a, a sacred, holy place, which it is. But that does not mean that it is removed from all of the pain and suffering that is in the world. But we talked about why it's still so important to come together and to go through life together and to be with each other in those painful situations. And that when we gather together, it is so important because we, 
when we are alone, we are not able to fully participate in the bigger part of the body, with, with the, which is what God, God is doing um, in our churches. And I am also so thankful for the congregation that, that I am a part of here, because I think um, it is such a, a warm, loving, embracing community, and we are really striving to, to do the original intent of the church, which is to love God, to love others, and then not to just stay here, but to go out and to serve the world. So it was a really great reminder for me to be able to talk about that and share that with other people. And I'm so excited to come back here to my local church and to continue serving here. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, so I, I also went to GC Ignite. I had the, uh, I was able to lead a workshop this year on humility. Um, it ended up being mostly discussion based, based. so we, uh, a group of about uh, eight of us, I think, got together and um, we were like, what, what is godly humility, what does it look like, that kind of thing, and how can we apply that to our lives? <clears throat> um, and so what, one of the things we, we focused on was this, this uh, quote, well, I'm also, you know, this, I think it's in Romans 12, 3 or something, where it talks about, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Um, but what, one of the things we focused on, too, was a quote by Rick Warren that says, uh, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Um, so there's, there's a difference between humility and low self-esteem. Because um, high, high self-esteem and low self-esteem can both be dealt with by, with humility, because both are um, kind of stem from thinking about yourself. Um, and so, because we, we should have high self-esteem because of the value we have as, you know, as children of God. Um, so, you know, when, when, we, uh, when we receive a compliment, we shouldn't say, oh, no, that's, that's, not, that's not me. I have nothing to do with that, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, because we, we do have a lot of value. Um, and, yeah, so it was... Uh, it was, a, it was a good discussion, and just we were kind of talking about our how sometimes it's really hard to be humble, and sometimes it's really hard to accept that maybe God's will for our lives is better than our will for our lives, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Megan and Stephen. I invited David to come up and speak as well, but unfortunately he got sick over the weekend, or got more sick, and so it, it, it hurts his voice to speak more. So um, you're off the hook, <laughs> David. <laughs> uh, yeah, so our theme for this year was Renew. Uh, Stephen and I had the privilege of being on the curriculum team this year it was our first time um, as, as a couple to just be able to work together um, on, on the leadership team. This really was a, a miracle that, that happened. Uh, the timing of everything was less than ideal, but at one point I had to just lift my hands up to God and say, you know, Lord, I may be on the leadership team or curriculum team, but, and, and I, feel, I may feel like it's going to go down in flames, but this is your conference. God, this isn't my conference, it's yours. And if you're going to make it happen, you're going to make it happen. And boy, did God make it happen. Uh, I, I'm just so inspired and so encouraged from, um, from our gathering <coughs> of the weekend. Um, I, I saw Megan on the worship team. David used his amazing musical talents as well um, to be on, on, on the worship team. Um, so to, just to give you a, a recap on, on what happened over the weekend. So we had... We had four different sessions. Um, <coughs> session one was, was renew self. Session two was renew our worth. Session three was renew our rhythms. And session four was renew love for your neighbors. So we wanted to, to be as scripturally based as possible. So we basically kind of went through the short passage of Romans 12, starting from the beginning um, all the way to the end of the passage. 
So uh, I had the opportunity to, uh, for the second time, lead a workshop on uh, the Bible, which was very intimidating for me to do last year. Uh, last year it was called Biblical Literacy, and I did not want to do it whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not like my father-in-law, Mike, um, who's a biblical scholar. I'm not a biblical scholar. I don't even like to read the Bible sometimes. Um, and so, but... You know, God transforms us. You know, when we choose to have a relationship with Jesus, when we choose to follow him, he wants to mess with us. He wants to mess with our minds because he wants to renew us. Um, one of, one of our, our leaders, uh, Kara, she said, um, God doesn't want us to stay our old crusty selves. And I think it's just so gross. I don't want to be crusty, you know? I want Jesus to renew me uh, and, you know, chip away the crustiness off me. You know, it's, it's just, it, it's it's yeah, so <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to lead a workshop called, and I, I, just, I decided to change uh, the workshop title from Biblical Literacy, which can, to um, millennials can seem a little bit intimidating, to rediscovering the Bible. Because I myself am in a process of rediscovering scripture for myself, and instead of being turned off by scripture, uh, realizing that the Bible is actually a library. Uh, with literary styles and genres, and so something like when you read the Psalms, for example, you read it differently than how you would read uh, Romans, one of Paul's letters, just like how you would read a novel uh, different from a, 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 like a suspense uh, book. And so the, the, the Bible is just so rich uh, in history and narrative, and that the Bible is actually a unified story that leads to Jesus and that we are called to be swept up into the same story, into this adventure. Um, so I was able to lead uh, Rediscovering the Bible in, in session one. Uh, we also had the privilege of having um, a, an activity together uh, with Jeffrey Brodnax. Um, he facilitated uh, a leadership activity called Five Voices, um, and, and this taken from a giant uh, organization. Um, so basically, the, the five vo every, every human being has each of these, these five voices, um, quiet uh, to loud. And so it's starting from a uh, nurture. I am a nurture. Um, uh, Stephen is a nurture. I believe Megan is a guardian. <coughs> nurture, nurture, and then secondary guardian. Um, so nurture is the quietest voice. Um, creative is the, is the second to the quietest voice. And then guardian. Um, and then we, we have connectors, and then we have pioneers. And so the purpose of the, the Five Voices activity was in order to lead, in order to lead in your church or to lead in, in, your, in your own context at work and your family, you have to know yourself. And, and we're always in the process of knowing ourselves. How did God, how did God wire me? Um, and, so, and how can I best... Um, use my strengths to to benefit uh, the church, um, and so that was really really important to see the intergenerational uh, communication by having Anthony Mullins, our uh, our internship uh, director there, um, Pastor Dyshawn Mills uh, from from Ohio, he he was there, and so it wasn't just um, a gathering of, of young adults. Uh, we, we had. Our, our older, more seasoned leaders to give us wisdom as to kind of help us along the way. And what I really appreciated about the weekend, was it, it's not just a gathering, just like a little powwow of, of millennials coming together, but recognizing that we gather in order to be sent out again, but to live, living out our, our sentness, that if, if you're a, a Christian or a follower of Jesus Christ, you God called, God created you to be sent just how God, God the Father sent Jesus into the world to be the light of the world. We are each carrying that light. And so we, we are each sent. And so I am um, so encouraged. Um, and, and we even ended the weekend um, on, on mon Monday. Uh, it was a Martin Luther King weekend, so it was a long weekend. So uh, Monday this week, we ended the weekend uh, with affirmations. And, and that was really powerful for me. Uh, we were able to go around the room and just write on, on different pieces of paper with different people's names on it and just write words of affirmation 
uh, of the encouragement and, and how you can see this person uh, in, in, in the future, how God will use this person. And what I really appreciate about this affirmations exercise was that the affirmation is not just coming from me um, as a human being, but this affirmation is coming from God as well. And so as I'm reading these, these words of, of, of comfort and affirmation on, on this piece of paper, um, I'm able to see that it's not just coming from this person, but this, these words are coming from God. I hope Jan is going. Thank you, uh, Barb and, and Judith. For, yeah. I, hope she's, I hope Jan's doing okay. Um, so uh, we'd like to, I'd like to just close by sharing a few photos from the weekend, just to give you a little taste of how cold it was, um, and how uh, God just surprised me, or, or surprised us over the weekend. Um, Saturday night we had uh, a social, uh, and then Sunday night we have a worship night. And so uh, Saturday night during our social, um, over half the people weren't even dancing anymore because it was started snowing outside. And it was my first time <laughs> uh, experiencing falling snow and experiencing how much it stings when, you, when it hits your eyes and your face and how cold your ears get and you really do need to wear gloves when you're trying to make snowballs and throw it at people. Um, otherwise, you just can't feel them anymore. And it hurts. It hurts. Um, uh, yeah, so it was probably negative three degrees Fahrenheit at night. Um, but thankfully, we, uh, we uh, the retreat center was was great. It was comfortable. We had good heaters, um, and we lived. Uh, oh, sorry. We were by right by a, a lake, a, a small man-made lake, and it froze over over the weekend. So we got to see it kind of froze, freeze over. It was my first time seeing that as well. Um, also, uh, not only did it snow on Saturday night, but we had a lunar eclipse on Saturday. How, how many people witnessed that? Yeah. Isn't that, that was cool. So I didn't. I had no idea we were going to have a lunar eclipse, and I. It was just so cool. This is the timing. God just treated us. I was just like, God is so cool. Thank you. Um, so, snow. Um, what else, Stephen? Do we only have like our group photos? Oh yeah. So there's Sierra Quinn and Patrick Quinn on on the left and on the right, and then the middle is Megan singing. So we had a really great worship team over the weekend. Um, uh, so the, uh, the opening night, last Friday night, we had uh, icebreakers and we had different games just to get us uh, running around. And we, we played uh, rock, paper, scissors. And there's David and I playing rock, paper, scissors. Um, this is a group all from California. Uh, the majority of our attendees came from California. So we, a lot of us did have to travel far. Um, that's my brother there on the on the on the bottom right, and there's David. Um, <laughs> so, and then that's just our our, our whole entire group there. Um, just just seeing these faces and and getting to know them a little bit more, I see them differently now than than I would have before the weekend. Is is that the last one? That's the last one. So, just want to thank you so much for your love and your prayers. And, and your your money, your financial support. We we couldn't have done this uh, without people like, without a loyal members like you. And, and we want this to keep going on for years to come. Uh, next year, next January, we're planning to have it in uh, a, a east and west coast a GC ignite. Um, so if you're between the ages of 18 and 30, 30 ish, very soft 30, it could be 30 to 35. Um, please, uh, please register by the end of um, uh, fall of this year, I believe. So, um, thank you so much, and, and we we will hopefully have it in California this next January. So that'll you won't have to fly all the way to the snow. Next year, so, thank you again.